here's what we're doing. This, the problem we're gonna run into, we got a great big thick piece of concrete, okay? The th concrete is thicker than the depth that our saw will cut. So we have to do what's called a step cut. To do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these lines like this, every single one of them. And then we're gonna take our jackhammers and we're gonna chisel this whole trough that we cut out. All right, so everything in here is going away. Like this, okay? Once we get that finished, then we're gonna take and put our saws back in there and cut another depth. So all we're doing is getting one depth width, making another trough, and then sticking it down in there uh, to cut the bottom side of it out and be able to finish that. How we know that we need to do this kind of cut is because the first thing we're gonna do is do a core drill. And we're gonna drill all the way down into this, pull that sleeve out, and be able to see how deep my concrete is. So I, it does two things. One, it tells me how deep my concrete is. Two, it tells me where my victim is located on the other side of this. Maybe that makes sense? Everybody with me there? Okay. So what we're gonna do, the thing you gotta think about, how big this circle is, or that, how big this square is here in the middle of it. Is that big enough for me to get through? Mm -mm. Oh, no. You wouldn't wanna bet me, okay? <laughs> because you gotta think about when he's standing there, all I got to do is get my hips through it. Once your hips are through it, you're going. Okay, especially when you're going to step, go down. step down through it like that. So that is plenty big. We every single one of us go through that hole right there. So when I start making this, I don't want to make it so big that we can drive a truck through it. We need to just make it big enough that I can get the first guy down in there and start to rescue. The rest of us can start opening this hole up a little bit later after the fact, okay? So we're making it big just for training purposes, but just so you guys know, it doesn't have to be huge. The other thing, what if I core drill it and find out that uh, I might have to make two step cuts, so you gotta make them wider, all right? So I'm gonna make this big trench, and then I'll make a smaller trench, and then we'll make the smaller trench underneath it, okay? Make sense? Let's talk a little bit about saws. Thank you, sir. Now, just like when you guys are cutting a, uh, a roof, you wanna make sure that those cuts overlap, all right? When you look at your blade, you have to make sure that your depth is at the bottom of your blade clear past this cut. Everybody with me? You have to take, take that full depth all the way past. The other thing that's a little bit different about the way we cut this concrete, when we put the blade in, we're burying the blade all the way to the bottom, okay, clear to the hub because what happens when you start pushing or pulling your blade or your saw and you start riding like this and it starts going up and down and up and down, what happens when you start to go trench this out is that concrete is being held by a half inch piece, okay? You have to get that same depth all the way across it and then when you lay your jackhammer in it, you'll be able to chip that right out and it'll be good to go, okay? So it's a little bit different, especially construction-minded people. They're always used to, you set it in, you cut a little bit, and you set it in, you cut a little bit. That's not what we're gonna do here. We're gonna run up saw all the way up, bury it clear in, and let it go. Now, the question always comes up, do we push a saw or do we pull a saw? Push, okay? When you're cutting concrete, the saw is designed to push, okay? It's gonna grab and go that way. When you're cutting metal, the saw is designed, you can pull it back to you. Okay, it's gonna work better that way. Couple things about the saws. Go over here to the saws. water that you want when you're running these saws you want to run them wide open okay that's the first thing we run the saws wide open the water mixture that we want coming out of this is if you take your if your kids were gonna make chocolate milk in the morning and you didn't stand there and watch them you know how they just keep on dumping the chocolate powder into it and just dumping it and how thick and nasty it is that's the consistency of the water that you want what happens if you have too much water that water will create a layer between the concrete and the blade and you will not actually be cutting with the blade okay so you just want a little bit of a thick milky 
substance coming out the back of it. If you're seeing powder, you don't have enough water, obviously. If you're seeing clear water coming out the back of the saw, you got too much, okay? Um, that's really about it with the saws. I mean, you just put them in, cut them. Um, as far as stance, make sure you get into a position where you can cut and set, set comfortably. I like to get to where I can set this thing in and I can rest my elbows on my knees and I can keep hands on it. Because anytime you start flexing like this, when you start taking steps, you're gonna bind that blade up and you're gonna burn your blade up, okay? So just get to a position where you're comfortable and you can set for a while. And then you can push that saw all the way in. If you can, if you, if you are lucky enough to be working on a nice flat piece of concrete, you can set the saw down and just let it ride, all right? These move, this gauge comes up. Gets all of it in it. That's it. So you guys will have a little bit more of trouble just setting this all down. So you're gonna have to hold it up like this to get that full depth, okay? Um, when we cut, we cut two saws at once, but we're cutting them opposite, opposing each other. All right, so we'll start on one side, the other one starts on the other side, we're cutting past each other like this. Okay, so that way we can get the maximum out of this and we can get through this hole as quick as we can. But how wide do you, you just cut it, just to, just to cut it on the width? You don't have a, like an average width cut or anything like that? What do you mean? Like here, it's here. Six inches, eight inches, 12 inches. Look for, I look at this because what's going to happen as soon as I take that trench out of there, I have to be able to fit this down inside it. Right. So I always make sure that my my <coughs> trench is at least wider than the uh, drive arm on my saw. Okay, because I'm going to be able to set it down inside it. Four to five inches. Four to six, somewhere in there. Yep. We're good. Once we get this cut, then we'll go over a little bit of concrete breaking, stuff like that. As far as starting into the concrete, uh, you don't ever want to stop the during mid-cut unless there's something going on, right? You just want to keep, just just push keep pushing right through. through. One safety thing about the saws. When you pick the saws up out of the concrete, set it back in and stop the blade. I don't want to see these guys walking around with blades spinning and put somebody's, cut somebody's leg off with it. Okay? All right, let's get some water on it, fire them up. over here you stopped about an inch and a half two inches short so where that's going to hurt you is when we start cutting you're chipping these out you're not going to get that full depth of that trench all the way out and what you'll end up having to do is either spend extra time chipping or you're going to have to go get the saws fired back up and recut them to get that full depth one of the things that we were talking over there when you're running that saw it's best just to bury the saw and get it up to that RPMs and keep steady pressure moving forward. When you try and work the saw back and forth and come up with different ideas as to how to maybe it'll cut faster, what you end up doing is getting an ocean effect in your cut. And when you start to chip this out, you won't get that full depth out of your cut when you do that. All right, which why is that important? It's because when I stake my next cut, I won't be able to get all the way through the concrete that we're trying to cut. That's why it's important to get the maximum depth out of our blade every single time we put it in the, in the uh, concrete. Everybody good with that? All right. Okay. When we're talking about breaking concrete, it's common people think, ah, it's just breaking concrete. It's not that hard. The problem is there is a technique to breaking concrete. When you think about your concrete slab like this, 
concrete is very hard in compression. That's how it's designed. It's very hard like that. Concrete is very weak in shear. When something's not underneath it, it's just hanging out, it's very easy to break that way. So when we start chipping concrete out, what we're trying to do is gain shear on our concrete. If I just take this hammer and set it right in the middle of that, I can chip and chip and chip and I'm not gonna do anything, all right? What I wanna do is start it down into it and then lay this hammer back as far as I can because then I'm attacking that concrete in shear and I'm gonna bust it up. The hardest piece to get out is the first piece because the concrete doesn't have any place to expand. After that, we just wanna start popping them up, popping them up, popping them up, okay? But if you just let it sit there, you're just, gonna, you're just working yourself for no reason. The other thing about a hammer, that hammer is designed, it goes up and down. There's a piston inside there and smacks that spike every single time it goes up and down. When you're listening to it, you want to hear that spike or this bit going ting, 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 ting. If it's just click, 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 it's not doing anything because your blade, your bit's stuck in the concrete. You got to get it up. It needs to bounce. That's what makes the concrete break, okay? So you got to listen when you're running these, and all these breakers will do it. Big ones, small ones, doesn't matter. It's the same principle. There's a piston that spins in there. That's what hits that, that bit every single time. All you're going to listen for is ting, 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 and you can hear it a little bit when you're running them. Hear it? That high pitch? Once you pop like that, get it down. Go ahead and lift that out. So now we get it inside. Instead of trying to go straight down on top of it, I want to attack it in here. In order to cut the last ones, two of these cuts have to be beveled. What we're going to try and do is called a clean lift out. So what I don't want to have happen is this hunk of concrete fall down on Mrs. McGillicuddy and kill her. Okay? Because she's right there. That's why we're doing this also, this lift out. I can't let that piece of concrete fall into that hole. So what I want to do, two of your cuts need to be beveled out. So when the concrete breaks through, it just catches it right there. The other two can be straight if you want to. As long as you have two opposing cuts that are on a bevel, it'll catch that piece. Okay? So let's move our hammers off, get the saws back up, drop them down inside that trough, and make your final cut. <coughs> Uh, you gotta lead it out. 